There are many places on our planet so remote or little mentioned that much of the world has never heard of said sites, and the Great Salvik Kurgan is one such example of an incredible ruin that has been largely forgotten or overlooked by modern academic study. Clearly of a Neolithic age, the thing which is most striking regarding the ruin is the sheer size of the megalithic blocks which make up the main structure. Claimed by many as the most majestic and mysterious ancient monument of southern Siberia, the mound is located in what is locally known as the so-called Siberian Valley of the Kings, where several thousand years ago, it is claimed that there existed a kingdom, one made up of a people once known as the Tagars. Thus, the age monument has been pinned on said culprits, with an age of around 2,300 to 2,500 years attributed to the site. The main earthwork is a stone square mound, 70 meters by 70 meters in size, as mentioned, huge slabs of Devonian sandstone. Some estimated as weighing as much as 50 to 70 tons were somehow once inexplicably delivered to the site from a quarry site of over 100 kilometers away found upon the banks of the Yenisei River. It is believed that it was an ancient temple, and at a later date an ancient astronomical observatory, which like most other Neolithic sites incorporates processional cycles in its alignment, showing the movement of the sun and the moon. As mentioned, it still remains a complete mystery as to what devices were once utilized for the importation and installation of these gigantic stones. At the corners and sides of the stone fences are deeply driven large meniers. All 23 stones are of an enormous sight. Measuring up to a height of 6 meters, they're clearly smoking guns flying in the face of upheld academic fallacies. The rare excavations and explorations noted as having been undertaken at the site note that before the construction of the giant earth embankment and its accompanying stone fence, there was a crypt of logs in its place, once in the form of a truncated pyramid. This whole crypt can be found inside the huge earthwork, preserved beneath, untouched, yet covered with a thick layer of bark. The crypt had the height of 2.5 meters in depth of 2 meters of water covered the pit. It is claimed that around the burial zone, for a long time a strong anomaly has continually been observed. The study of these phenomena has indeed been engaged by scholars, but the pace of said explorations has been suspiciously slow-paced. Who built the Great Salbic Kurgan? How were these huge stones transported to the site and once driven into the earth at the site? What is this quote, strong anomaly? More investigation and popularization of the site is desperately needed. It is a place which we find highly compelling. Thanks for watching guys and until next time, take care. Hulgoat is a popular destination with tourists and holidaymakers alike. This is due to its impressive natural setting among which the vestiges of an ancient forest still survive, one that once covered the entire island of Brittany. Once part of royal and ducal lands, the forest is now overseen by the French Forestry Commission, the National Forest Office. It has a footprint of around 10 square kilometers, with a large replanting scheme repairing much of the damage sustained by the forest and storms, which occurred upon the 15th and 16th of October 1987, when 3.1 square kilometers of trees were leveled or damaged. However, within this surviving ancient forest, ancient Neolithic ruins can be found. Ruins synonymous with many other countries around the world, as if made by a people who were simply motivated by aesthetics, thus creating stunning, yet equally baffling structures, which we have come to know as dolmens. However, although in some areas of Earth these can be attributed to past dwellings, many of them which survive were created with such small base stones or such large roof stones, that arguing that creating them for any other reason but their creation continues to be just as puzzling an explanation as the techniques that were once seemingly harnessed which enabled our purportedly Stone Age ancestors the ability to pick up ancient megaliths of such enormous scales. Le Champignon, or the mushroom located within the forest, is but one example of these mystifying, unarguably Neolithic formations, once created with a roof stone of many tons of weight, yet any logical argument as to the past purpose of these stone structures remains just as elusive to explain as how these incredibly ancient people somehow once accomplished such feats.
Who were the Neolithics? How can their ruins be located all over the world, yet not attributed to a group in communication with each other? We feel the evidence to support this postulation is all but overwhelming, yet continually denied as a possibility, or even considerable as a reality by any field which is in defense of current rigidly defended fallacies, claiming that such groups were primitive and lacked the ability to cross continents. Yet the evidence in defense of this, found on almost every continent on Earth which we feel is obvious proof of a conspiracy. Regardless of this and the denial of them having links with other countries, we find the ruins which still survive within this ancient wood within Brittany as highly compelling. Roman engineers have been attributed and indeed claimed many ruins as their own in which they were simply incapable of creating. Yet they seemingly hijacked a number of sites which we have continued to claim were not their works. The Patera pipes being one such example. Yet alas, although we claimed that the ruin was pre-Roman, our next subject of interest we feel unarguably supports said posit as not only was the creation claimed as having been conceived by the Romans, but these sites, often the only surviving example, thus is also often argued as the first creation in regards to said concept. Yet although these are often claimed as first attempts, Many of the ruins were of such perfected accuracy that not only are they still functional today, but could still serve modern man's purpose. The Patera Aqueduct system, which in fact includes several examples of this ingenious solution to hilly areas in regards to water transportation, places in which the topography of the land makes bridge building an impossible task, forcing the engineers to think of a solution. With the site in question being such an innovation, now known as an inverted siphon, the one we are focusing on tonight is Delic Kemmer, near Patera, undoubtedly connected to the incredible ancient relic that is the Patera pipes. An inverted siphon being a pressurized water conduit. One end sits at a higher elevation than the other, with the center of the structure being the lowest point. The Delikemmer siphon, which was apparently renovated following an earthquake in the 1st century CE, is built out of stone blocks laid across the top of an impressive several hundred foot long wall. Piping holes were then artistically carved out of blocks of stone, which were fitted into each other and ten apparently sealed to create a watertight channel. Thus, due to the system being closed off and pressurized, when water flowed into the higher end, it was forced through the system and subsequently across the valley. The inverted siphon allowed the aqueduct to cross lower elevations, forcing the flow against gravity at certain points. Yet the most compelling detail of the site, and the one we perceive as a smoking gun supporting our prior posit and confirming that this was in fact the work of a past highly advanced yet now lost civilization is the polygonal stonework which can be found within the walls of the structure, a type of blockwork construction found all over the world yet denied as being connected, just like that of the Neolithic ruins we often share here on the channel, that regardless of the similarities in ruins throughout nearly every continent are actively denied as having once been the work of the same group. Kate Clow, an explorer behind popularization of Turkey's Lycian Way hiking trail, described the blocks in a Turkish newspaper title, Hurriyet Daily News, quote, The system was designed for easy maintenance. If you examine the fallen blocks, you will find occasional ones with top holes bored into them. These were for cleaning out deposits and must have been sealed with a plug when the pipe was filled with water. There were also occasional stones where the socket cutout was extended so that a stone could be slipped out of the pipeline. Without this provision, replacing a faulty stone would have been impossible, as the blocks interlock completely. The pipe joints have traces of a lime cement used initially to seal them. However, the whole pipe is now thickly lined with a deposit of pink lime from the water inside it, and this must have quickly sealed any remaining leaks between the stones." End quote. Who built the reverse siphon and the entire aqueduct as a whole? It is a place which we find highly compelling. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care.